Welcome back once again, all of my low carb friends. And for those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. Today, I have another very easy keto bread recipe for you. Today, I am going to show you how to make egg and dairy free hamburger or sandwich buns. Now, I do already have an egg and dairy free sandwich bun and bread recipe on my channel, but I have learned a lot since I posted that video. And so I thought I would give you an updated version to what I hope to be a better tasting and better texture sandwich bun or hamburger bun, whatever you want to use it for. So if you want a printable version of this recipe, you can check out my website at JanetStelichesLowCarbKitchen.com. You can find a printable version of this recipe and other goodies there for you. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see lots of easy, delicious, low-carb keto recipes, make sure you click that subscribe button and click the notification bell that's right next to the subscribe button. That way you can be notified every time I put out new videos. And if you are a music lover, make sure you check out the link in the description to my other YouTube channel, Inspirational Songs with Janet. I posted another new song there, so make sure you listen to that and subscribe to that channel also. And if you'd like to help support this channel, make sure you scroll down in the description of the video. You'll see some affiliate links. Anytime you purchase anything using those affiliate links, a small portion of your purchase will go to me and help support the channel. So while we do all that, let's get cooking. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees Lightly grease five hamburger bun molds, or if you don't have any molds, you can line a baking sheet with some parchment paper or a silicone baking mat. I like to use the molds because it's easier to make sure that the buns are evenly spaced apart and it just helps them keep their shape a little bit better, but you can do it just fine without the molds. In a large mixing bowl, combine 123 grams or around 17 and a half tablespoons of coconut flour, 60 grams or around nine and a half tablespoons of sunflower seed flour. Remember, like I always tell you guys, you do not have to buy pre-made sunflower seed flour if you don't want to. You can just make your own. Just check out my video on how to make your own sunflower seed flour in less than five minutes. Add 27 grams or around one fourth cup of psyllium husk powder. 26 grams or around three and a half tablespoons of finely ground flaxseed meal. I use the golden flaxseed meal. Add eight grams or around two teaspoons of baking powder, a fourth teaspoon of salt, and if you want to, you can add some dry spices or dry seasonings to give your bread a little bit more flavor. I'm just adding nine grams or about one tablespoon of instant dry yeast and four grams or around one teaspoon of granulated monk fruit sweetener. I like a little bit of a tiny sweet yeasty taste in my bread. Sift the dry ingredients all together until they're fully combined and there are no lumps in the dry ingredients. Add 10 milliliters or around two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar. No, this is not going to make your bread taste like apple cider vinegar. It just helps your bread to be able to have a little bit lighter texture to it. Add 560 milliliters or around two and a fourth cups of warm water. Make sure this is warm water, not boiling hot and not room temperature, but warm. Think of bath water. You need this warm so that the psyllium husk can soften and do its magic in the bread. If it's not warm, the psyllium husk most likely will not absorb the water very well and you'll have wet, nasty bread. So make sure the water is warm. Stir everything together until everything starts combining together. When you first start stirring this, it's gonna look very soupy and liquidy and you're gonna be like, what's going on? But trust me, just keep stirring it and the psyllium husk will start absorbing the water so stir everything together for at least 45 seconds to a minute or until the mixture is moist and starts holding together. After about 45 seconds to a minute, scrape down the sides of the bowl and push the dough all together to the center of the bowl. Then knead the dough inside of the bowl for about a minute or until the dough is flexible and you're able to form it into a smooth ball. After about a minute and the dough is able to form, let the dough sit uncovered at room temperature for about 10 minutes. This will allow the dough to absorb any extra liquid, so do not skip this step because if you do, you will have wet, nasty bread. So you have to let this sit for at least 10 minutes. So after about 10 minutes, the dough is still going to be lightly moist, but it should be holding together really well and be nice and smooth and soft. Divide the dough between your prepared hamburger bun molds. It's roughly around 7 tablespoons in each mold, give or take a bit. If you're just using the baking sheet, then divide the dough into about five equal portions and 
Place the portions on your baking sheet. Roll each portion into a smooth ball. Make sure there are no cracks in the dough ball because if there's cracks, then when it starts to bake, it will crack more. So you want to make sure that it's nice and smooth. If there are any cracks, just very lightly dampen your finger and rub out the cracks. Just don't dampen your finger too much. You just want enough to... Make sure the cracks are all out, or at least mostly out. Then place the smooth dough balls back into your molds or onto your baking sheet. If you are using the baking sheet, make sure that you leave space in between each one of the dough portions. These do expand a little bit, so you want to give the dough plenty of room to breathe so it can expand without running into each other. Use the palm of your hand and very lightly flatten the tops of each one of the dough portions. Do not pack this really tight. One of the things about breads that have psyllium husk in them is they have to breathe. So you just want to flatten the top of the dough just enough to where it spreads a little bit and looks more like a hamburger bun rather than just a huge dough clump. When I press it, I like to curve my hand just a little bit when I press the top just so it still has a little bit of a dome shape. But again, just don't pack too tight. Let your dough breathe. Once your dough portions are shaped, if you want to, you can sprinkle some sesame seeds or some topping of your choice on top of each one of the dough portions. I'm just using a little bit of everything bagel seasoning. You don't have to put anything on there at all if you just want a plain sandwich or hamburger bun. Place your pan in your preheated oven. Bake at 350 degrees for 35 minutes or until a tester comes out clean. Once the buns are done baking, remove them from the oven and allow them to cool in the pan for at least 20 minutes so they can firm up really well. After 20 minutes, remove the buns from your molds or from your baking sheet and transfer them to a wire rack. Then allow the buns to sit for at least one to two hours before you slice them. You want them to be completely cooled and you want the ingredients to have set in really well. That way you can have a nice, smooth, firm bread without any flakings and without any wet centers. You just want it to set really well. I like to let mine sit overnight. That way all the ingredients is fully set in and all the flavor is set in. When you're ready to eat the buns, then turn them on their side and cut them in half horizontally to create a top and a bottom. You can eat these plain or you can fill them with the filling of your choice. Alrighty, here we are with my yummy little sandwich here. I just put some ham and cheese and baby spinach, tomato, that kind of stuff all on there. Nothing extraordinary, but it still looks good. This bun here, I just cut in half because when I actually do the tasting, I want to just taste what the actual bread tastes like with nothing else on it, just so I can see if the actual bread itself has a better taste and texture than the other egg and dairy-free bread that I made. So this is what it looks like on the inside. Ah, come here, try to do this one-handed. <laughs> this is what it looks like on the inside. See, it's got a nice little crumb in there. Now, if you're wondering why mine is so dark, it's because I grabbed a different brand of psyllium husk powder and apparently that brand uses dark psyllium husk rather than blonde psyllium husk. Unfortunately, brands don't specify in their ingredients whether their psyllium husk is blonde or brown. So you just kind of have to randomly guess and find a brand that uses blonde psyllium husk if you want a lighter color in your buns. And to me, the darker color really doesn't matter as long as it tastes good. That's really the most important thing to me. But if you're one of those who gets thrown off by the dark color, just make sure you find a brand that uses blonde psyllium husk and not dark psyllium husk. Anyway, first thing I noticed when I did cut this in half to create the top and bottom is that there is a tiny bit of dampness in the middle of it. Not a lot, it's not squishy mushy. It's just a tiny little bit of dampness, but that's just because you have to use so much liquid when you're using psyllium husk. Cause psyllium husk is very absorbent. So you have to use a lot of water with it in order to get it to jellify, I guess you wanna say, get gooey so it binds all your ingredients together. So if that dampness does bother you, you can just preheat a dry skillet over medium heat, set it down with the cut side down, heat it for about one to two minutes. That'll take away the dampness and if it bothers you. But to me, it's not that much of a damp texture, so I'm not too worried about it. But anyway, this is what it looks like when it's all stacked together. Look at that yumminess. See, it's nice and sturdy. It holds all the sandwich ingredients, so you won't have to worry about it falling apart. 
I like the fact that it's not crumbly. My last egg and dairy free bread and buns, they were really good and they held together nicely, but they did crumble a little bit, especially after they were stored for a day or two. These I made two days ago because I wanted to see how they would store and how the texture would be after they were stored. And they stored really nice and the texture is still really nice even after they've been stored. It didn't get crusty or crumbly or mushy or anything. You know, the texture is pretty much the exact same as when it came out. So it's really nice. So, so far, so good with this. So far, this is better than my other egg and dairy free buns and bread, which I thought it would be because I've learned a lot. <laughs> so anyway, the most important thing, of course, as we always say, is how this tastes. And like I said, I'm just going to taste the part without anything on it because I want to know what the actual bread tastes like. So here goes. Mmm. That's good. Mm-hmm. I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that. That has a good light texture to it. It's not super heavy or anything like that. Like a lot of breads that have any amount of coconut flour in them can be a little bit on the heavy side, but the psyllium husk makes this nice and light. This doesn't taste overpowering like coconut flour or like sunflower seed flour. There's a nice balance there. I think the sunflower seed flour and the coconut flour and the psyllium husk, they all just kind of balance each other out but it is a thumbs up for me and it is better than my other one. So yeah, good stuff. Yummy to my tummy. Mm -hmm. You can eat these immediately. If you do have any leftovers, store them in an airtight container at room temperature for up to three days or in an airtight container in your refrigerator up to five days or in a freezer safe airtight container in your freezer for up to one month. Eat and enjoy. And that's our recipe of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you click that thumbs up like button, click that subscribe button, leave me a comment if you want to. Let me know if there's any recipes that you'd like to learn how to make and I'll do what I can to get those out there for you. And as always, keep cooking.